Okay, folks, it's jobs associated with the big data, cloud computing, machine learning, artificial intelligence revolution. This is lesson three of the motivation uh, part of this class. And we look at data science, clouds, computer science, computer engineering, and data engineering. And we look at it from various points of view. Um, using actually some data no longer available from indeed.com, who obviously realized what they were giving away was too valuable. All right. Well, here's some um, data whose main implication is that China is beating us all up. Uh, here we have the number of degrees from the National Science Foundation in the US. And we have here bachelors, and here we have PhDs. And lo and behold, here's China. Soaring to infinity. And here we have European Union, first top eight countries, and here we have USA, and here we have Japan. Notice all are increasing except for Japan. Similar decrease in Japan for the um, PhD. I think, I assume that's the, just the birth rate in Japan declining. And um, for PhD, it sort of slightly surprises me because China is very strong in research. Uh, but their number of PhDs is not soaring like the number of um, bachelor's degrees. So that's actually a striking piece of data. And in fact, China is below the European Union, which is here. Pretty, uh, some, that's not dramatic data, but at least it's interesting. And here we have some, a slide which is meant to address the fact that everything is all over. Uh, robots will replace us, there'll be no jobs left. And I still remember in 1990, um, Japan was going to take all our manufacturing jobs. So there are all these scare stories. And uh, what this uh, amusing um, slide does was points out that this particular robot scare has been going on since 1920, when the machines were taking over jobs. And automation was taking over jobs. Hear more about machines in 1960. 1980, robots. And here we have 2018, robots. So, is that going to happen? Well, I'm not certain anybody knows, but there are some useful slides in the following, which will say this might be not so obvious what's going on. Here we have from 1950 to 2015, and the number of locomotive train jobs. That's declining due to something or other. Well, it's partly due to aircraft. The number of aircraft jobs actually grows inversely to, to automobile or train jobs. So actually, the total is about constant. So this just points out that um, jobs are changing which means certain types of jobs are disappearing, but other jobs are appearing. So you have to look, you can't do a tribute analysis. You have to look at it uh, both from what's being added as well as what's being subtracted. If you find, of course, what's being subtracted does tell you that certain fields are becoming uh, less important. And in fact, you know, like at universities, it's no longer quite as obvious that um, um, a liberal arts education is as valuable as it used to be, and you really might need to know some more quantitative skills to, to succeed in the market today. The next slide is similar, but it's agriculture versus services. So here we have agricultural jobs going down, but service jobs are soaring. And actually, they soared more than the agricultural jobs have declined. They've services from 1900 to 1930 went up, whatever it did, 14 million of our agriculture declined by 4 million. All right, so that's, <coughs> we see this trend is universal. All right, here's another way of looking at here. We have unemployment rate on this side. Uh, gross domestic product in trillions of dollars here. And of course, the GDP is soaring. Um, Whereas the um, unemployment rate is uh, actually roughly constant. There's some blips 
the giant, you know, it was the giant catastrophe in the early 30s, with the stock market crash and dust bowls and things like that, when the unemployment went up, it was over 20%, 25%. But it's been 5.8% 70 year average since, uh, since after the Second World War. And of course, the GDP has just gone marching forward, except for this little glitch in 2008, which people will remember. Um, some sort of um, correction. And people, if you look at this, you will see that, well, there's actually a pretty strong uniform rise here. Um, but it's, uh, this, there are glitches every now and then, and quite common to have downturns. The 2008 downturn actually is quite big on the GDP scale compared to other downturns. So this says that despite of all these drastic changes and these revolutions in which we're discussing, some things don't change that much. Okay, the next set of slides discusses some details of, uh, of uh, employment. Uh, the first slide is a relatively old one from Microsoft. Well, at least uh, I guess they paid for the results that this uh, survey gave. And it's basically cloud jobs worldwide in millions. And it varies from 6.7 in 2012 to 13.8 in 2015. And you can see um, it's done by overall by country. China is the highest, India, United States. And then uh, Indonesia is surprisingly perhaps number four. And the green is the um, fraction compared to the overall workforce, which is um, varies actually quite a bit from country to country. And um, it's 0.7% for the United States, a reasonably high number. Uh, but other than others are lower and higher than this. Australia is one. Uh, we have here. Uh, Israel at 0.91, um, Brazil at 0.37, Japan low at 0.4. So anyway, this is a large number of jobs. It probably its definition is a bit unclear. It may include uh, both running clouds and using clouds, which is the latter especially is pretty nebulous, but they're still jobs. Uh, here is a more precise. Uh, Study from McKinsey on big data jobs or data science jobs, and they have made this uh, interesting analysis of the uh, jobs in two categories. They find 140 to 190 thousand people in the U.S. needed in um, deep analytic skills. That's the sort of hardcore computer science area, and 1.5 million in what we would call the decision maker track or managers or analysts, which are the people with the know-how to actually use big data to make decisions. At IU Informatics, you might say, is sort of training people for the decision maker track and computer science for the somewhat smaller but critical 140 to 190,000. This plot here has had significant influence and a significant motivation in pursuing data science, certainly at Indiana University. So those numbers were gaps. Here is another plot from uh, an article by Davenport from a talk he gave in Berkeley. This is a very good Berkeley talk series, November 2012. And uh, it's from LinkedIn. I'm not quite certain how LinkedIn got data from 1990. I don't think it existed then. But anyway, this is the uh, some sort of pic depiction of the growth in analytics and data science growth. Um, and this is a, in terms of percentage. So it's not a big percentage, 0.1%, but um, it's still it's obviously growing. And presumably it's growing after 2010 when this particular plot ended. Um, here is, uh, if we come back to the Mika, Mika talk uh, from KPCB. And uh, here she has a uh, plot of uh, the number of graduates in computer science. This must be in the US, which is over 50,000 per year. And the number of job openings requiring a bachelor's degree in computer science, which is, as she says, 
2.4 times as many as the number of graduates. This is a this says that not just data science, but the broad area of IT is currently got a huge uh, shortage of people, and that's just saying that the world is becoming electronic. I mean, is becoming informaticized, or everything X is becoming EX rapidly, and the jobs are in EX, and of course, unfortunately. Uh, the jobs in X, which are not EX, are actually going down. That's part of the reason the worldwide there's some uncertainty or disruption in, in, in things going on. Here, yeah, the final slide in this set is uh, again from Mika, it's just uh, an amusing depiction of the number of jobs, some street. Uh, a uh, view from Silicon Valley, advertising jobs of all sorts of types, director of business development, um, director of engineering, senior software engineer, DevOps engineer, dot, 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 technical sales engineer. And she points out the five companies alone, which are not actually, you don't even discuss Facebook, Twitter, Google, which, you, or which might have even more. Uh, these five c companies, which are mainly the old companies, although Qualcomm is pro and it's pretty near the front line, Intel, IBM, Microsoft, Oracle, and, and, and Qualcomm. Although I know I'm not trying to be negative about these other companies, they are they were just established ahead of. They still have a they're still obviously leaders in the new areas as well as the old areas. Anyway, those five companies have 10,000 openings in the U.S. and it's those openings that uh, your um being trained to do, and of course, data science is only a small subset of those openings. But so, that's um, that's the backdrop for this course. That we're living in an I, uh, in a world that is becoming an IT world, for obvious reasons, and that trend is likely to continue. Thank you. And we have here some um, interesting results from Indeed.com. Unfortunately, Indeed.com's results are so valuable, they've stopped making them available. So they only run up to the middle of, uh, of 2017. And here we have a plot of the job postings representing data science, which is right at the bottom. Those that have computer engineering, 3.7%, a dominant request, and people who want cloud, which is pretty high at 1.34%. Those are job postings. Let's look at the uh, uh, what the uh, the actual job applicants want. So here we have the job seeker interest, and we have exactly the opposite trend. Now we have data science at the top, uh, computer engineering at the bottom, and cloud is actually still in the middle. So there's an, there is a clear sort of mismatch between people wanting to do data science and jobs advertising data science, except I am told that data science is still a really hot area because there just aren't enough people satisfying the jobs which are called data science. I think it's also true that not enough people satisfying the jobs called cloud, but that's not quite so sexy at the moment. <coughs> okay. Okay, folks, and now I've got a different issue here. Um, this is an amusing picture. This is sort of the structure of a system, machine learning system, with different components, um, extracting features, uh, the infrastructure, monitoring uh, tools and things. And here we have buried in the middle is a tiny part of the code called machine learning, because that's just a little algorithm right in the middle. And around this, you have all sorts of stuff to collect the data, verify the data, that's all data engineering. And also here's systems, computer software systems, you know, I guess as well. So, this is sort of applied machine learning. So this just says that um, you need to be a little careful when you do data science. I mean, you don't just want to look at the machine learning. It's a tiny part of data science, of, of a real system. Whether that's data science or data science and all of this, is that's a matter of definition. I think people are a little confused about 
about uh, what is data science, which what does it actually cover and what the jobs are? I think that's an important area we need to do more work in. There is a nice, you can look up the original NIPS 2015 paper here. And I had a follow up to that because I then asked Gartner, um, what is and how do we understand different types of people and what you want to, what you need in a team? So here is a team devoted to something in the data science area, and then it's doing something to do with AI and applications with machine learning. And here is the composition of this team. So we have data scientists, 10%, and look at their capabilities. So they're pretty broad. Data science is actually a pretty challenging field, because you need to know some IT skills, some quantitative skills about applying machine learning and knowing what to do and then some understanding of the domain. And then you have data, but then this should be contrast with data engineering who don't know anything about machine learning. They have more IT skills and little knowledge of the domain because they're doing general issues of data. Then of course we have, you know, this is a bit unfair on data scientists. They need to know as much about the domain as the business experts. And business experts know I, know I, know I, don't know any IT or any quantitative skills. Notice that perhaps because this is a rare talent to know to have all these three things, data scientists are only 10% of the team. That's because all the hard work is done by the 30% of data engineers, the 15% of software engineers, and the 20% of business experts. Then there are more informal data scientists called citizen data scientists here which have somewhat less domain understanding, significantly less IT skills, and less quantitative. They're just sort of um, junior data scientists. Um, and then we have the great people, the quads, the geeks, the really tremendous experts on um, quantitative skills with uh, gains. Good, but not superstar IT skills and some domain understanding. And then you have unicorns, which basically um, are super at almost everything. And according to this, they're not quite as good at quant beats at analyzing things, but they have far better deep understanding of the domain, and they have pretty reasonable IT skills. Uh, unicorns are the key people. If you're a unicorn, you can write your own contract and get arbitrary funding. Um, so there's roughly no, there's hardly any unicorns in the world. Um, so and of course this this is although we have categories here it's all a continuum. And just by, I just want to point out that when you build a team, um, the amount of uh, machine learning expertise is not necessarily critical in all members of the team because it's a giant system. And sometimes things like cleaning up the data, which doesn't really require deep machine learning, is the dominant thing to do. So that's the, all. Of, that's the last comment I have on data engineering. It's actually a pretty important area which uh, more people should study. Thank you very much.